Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Burnt Pancakes podcast. I am so excited to have you joining me for another Momversation. My podcast is meant for moms. I'm sharing the message that everyone burns their first pancake, and I have a special guest today. Her name is Megan Sanders. She's a first-time mom normalizing the messy. She's sharing all of the things she wished she knew before she became a mom. I especially love that we're going to talk about how to play with a baby. She has tons of tips on what you can do to quote unquote play with your littles. Um, that doesn't require tons of toys, tons of loud toys, um, buying a bunch of things, all things that you can do at home. So you're going to love this conversation brought me back to those baby days. I loved it. Um, so please sit back and enjoy. Megan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited. I am very excited to have you on. I follow you on Instagram and I was like instantly um, drawn to you because you say that you are normalizing the messy, you're a first time mom, and you just want to share with other moms the things you wish you knew sooner. And like how many of us are in that boat? <laughs> you know, we're all like, help, help, help me. <laughs> Yes. It's such uncharted territory that we need all the help we can get. Right. And like, I went in thinking I was prepared and then I became a mom and I was like, I am not prepared at all. Right. Yes. Um, No matter how much you prepare, I don't think it's ever enough. (laughs) No, not at all. Well, why don't you let us know, um, when did you become a mom? How old is your little girl? My little one was born in December. So she is just over one now. Um, I'm not one to keep up with the months, so (laughs) I guess that's close to 16 months. But after the year, I'm like, all right, we're done. She's either one, one and a half, or two. (laughs) Yes. Was that like for me that first year, that first birthday was like such a big deal because it was almost like, okay, cool, he's one, but it was like I survived a year. Like, yes, I am eating that cake because this was a big year. Did you feel that on her birthday? I did. And funny enough, we actually didn't do a huge birthday party for her because I was like, she's not going to remember it. She's barely doing anything. She wasn't walking. And so I was like, you know what? This is a celebration for us as parents. We survived the first year. We survived all these changes. And so we did have our family and friends over, but I was like, this is for us. This is just survival over here. And we got through. I I think I had two pieces of cake that day. I was like, I I deserve it. Okay. So what was your adjustment to motherhood? Like, was it what you expected? Was it smooth ish? How was it for you? I think it was more, um, just more than I expected. And I say that because it wasn't it wasn't something that ever ended. Like this change into motherhood is ongoing. <laughs> and everyone's <laughs> like, how was that first year? Or how was this? I'm like, we're still in it. We are still adjusting to motherhood. Right. In, so right? much changes that first year. You know, it's like, yeah. okay, I just maybe figured out this like newborn stage. And you're like, okay, now they're an infant. And yeah. It's- exactly. And there's so many different stages. So it's like that fourth trimester, the postpartum, you know, mm-hmm. getting adjusted to that. And then you figure out their sleep schedule and then they're ready to start solids. And there's just so many changes in that first year. I was not prepared. I was not (laughs) prepared for all of that. (laughs) Um, what would you say has been the most wonderful part of becoming a mom? Honestly, just watching her learn and grow. It is crazy to me to see their little personality form and watch them smile and figure out everything. It's just nuts. It's, it's nothing that I've seen before. And that's coming from someone with a degree in education. Like I have been around children and I've been around watching them learn, but when it's your own child, it's crazy. Yes. Yes. I just, this morning I was dropping my son off at preschool. I was kind of waiting in the car for the door to open and he was playing outside And I was just like staring at him because he was like looking at something. And then all of a sudden it made him like the biggest smile on his face. And I was like, you're so cute. Like, you just like, like oh my God, you're Mm -hmm. mine. Yes. Oh, they're so fun. Um, What was surprisingly challenging about being a a mom? Um, I think finding my confidence actually. Um, 
And that has a lot of aspects to it because there's a lot of opinions. There's a lot of outside voices and just learning to say, no, I'm not doing that. Or no, I'm not comfortable with that. And just being confident in being a mom. You are the one in charge now. Yes. That's such a good one. I still am figuring that out. Yes. It's hard. It is so hard. Especially family Family is the hardest one that I have to say, like, actually, we're not going to do that. Or please don't give her that. Or, you know, and we are low technology. She does not watch TV yet. So it, it's one of those things where people are like, oh, does she want cartoons? I'm like, no, she doesn't. She doesn't know what cartoons are. Hold off as long as possible. Cause (laughs) once you open that, it's like floodgates, like they get addicted. They are literally addicted. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Do you have a lot of family near you? Um, yes and no. Um, they are close. They're all like within an hour. Okay. But like his parents and my parents still work full time. So we don't have a lot of hands on help. Okay. But on weekends or like after hours, they're close enough where we can do dinner and we can do weekend stuff. Mm, that was such a good one, the confidence. Cause I felt like I went into motherhood like, oh, I've got this. And I did not have it. And it just like shattered me. I was like, I don't know how to like gain that back. And I still, to this day, like dropping off my son at preschool, he was kind of wild this morning and he was running around the classroom and the teachers have had to say multiple times, like Maverick, the classroom's for walking. And I was like, Oh my God, like, why is my kid the only crazy one right now? And automatically I start feeling like mom guilt. Like what's wrong with my kid? What's wrong with me? Yes. So exactly. hard. So Even hard. The things you think you do have planned out. Maybe you do. And maybe you're confident there. And then it's like a brick wall. And you're like, oh, I never prepared for that. Right. <laughs> right. Or the kid you get is going to just totally throw you for a loop. It's yep. crazy. Yeah. Or like I figured out my first and then my second came along and he's so different. So That's different. what everyone warns us about because ours she's an angel. She slept great. She eats pretty great. Like it's been so easy and everyone's like, wait for your second. It will uh, not be the same. Say that. I mean, I will say, I feel like my second is easier. So that was a plus, but just okay. different. Yeah. Oh, so her personality is very like chill and so chill. So sweet. She will just come up to you, give hugs and kisses. Aww. Like so easy. And she loves to play by herself. Like all of oh these Oh my things, gosh. Oh my right? gosh. Like, okay, we're going to get to that because you have some <laughs> tips, but that's amazing. My oldest is not at all like that. Like for him, it's like, mom, you want to play? You want to play? Like he's an extreme extrovert, loves friends. Is always like, when are we going to see these people? But when he was little, like two, it was like, mom, like he could not be in a room by himself. He had to be oh, where yeah. I am. Whereas my middle is like, I'm going to do this puzzle for five hours, mom. I'll be good. I'm okay. <laughs> Which is yeah, so hard. That's, yeah. that's her. I'm like, what are you doing in your room? Like, why are you so quiet? And she's just, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, you hit the jackpot. That's awesome. I'm sure I there are challenges. she does probably have some challenges, but that is yeah. a really nice personality trait that they can play by themselves. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. L- let's talk like baby gear. Cause I know part of like your social media is like, I'm going to share things that work for me, not work for me. So wow. let thinking about what you used for like the baby stage and the first year, is there anything from your registry that you were like, didn't even touch that. I didn't even <laughs> use that. <laughs> um, I think the big thing and really it wasn't even on my registry because I knew from the start, it was like, we're not touching it. <laughs> was baby detergent because Mm -hmm. I was like, I already do the laundry. I am Mm -hmm. not like guaranteeing myself to do separate laundry with separate detergent. And now if she had sensitive skin and it didn't work, sure. But I was like, we're going to start with just mixing it in with our stuff. (laughs) I'm not making it harder for myself. So that was one thing I was like, absolutely not. And thankfully it worked. Thankfully she was fine with that. Mm-hmm. And and none of mine had yeah. issues with regular laundry. Yeah. Yes. That's good. And that, like safe space. I don't have to have two different types of detergents and. Yeah. Save space, saves money, saves mm-hmm. time. There's so many benefits. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, any, any other items? I think other than that is like all the extra cute stuff. Like the, mm-hmm. she did wear bows because 
I was like, without it, everyone will think I, she's a boy. Yeah. And how <laughs> but, fun is that? I would have, if I had a daughter, I would have had like the Bow of the Month Club subscription. <laughs> yes, all the those. Um, but all the extra, like the jackets and the robes and the cute slippers, oh. they are changed so often. We're not, we don't even have time, right? It's right. a onesie and there's already a blowout and we're on to the next house. Right. <laughs> That's, I think my third lived in just like pajamas for his first year. Yeah. Like, oh, these are just so much easier. That's it. Exactly. Have you onesies started? Yeah. <laughs> have you started already boxing up her clothes? Did you keep it? What'd you do? Yes. And I kept way more of it than I probably will ever need. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it was hard. It was way harder than I expected to get rid of the clothes. Yes. And I think too, because this is our first. And so it's just all the what ifs, like, what if we have another girl? What if she's the same size at the same holiday and like the mm -hmm. holiday outfits? Those are hard for me to get rid of. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, what are the chances that we'll have another girl born in December wearing newborn, you know, and like, mm -hmm. what but let's keep it just in case. Just in case. <laughs> just in case. That's what I told my husband. He'd be like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, let's just keep it. But for yeah. me, when I, after I had my third and I was like, I know I'm done. It was mm -hmm. a, a lot easier. There are a few little pieces that I've saved, but everything else I'm like, let's make room. Let's make room. Get it out of here. Yes. Have you seen, um, I had a friend that did this, the mom, so moms will keep like a few different items from the baby's childhood and newborn stage. So it might be like their first pair of shoes, first onesie, maybe a bib, bows, whatever. And then whenever that kid, so like whenever my daughter is grown and having her first child, then I will give her that little box. Oh, I know my best friend's mom did it. And I was like, you kept that. You had to keep years. that. that Oh, wow. I know, but how thoughtful how to say like, this was your first yes. year of shoes. Or yeah, shoes. so cute. I do have, it's actually sitting on my shelf right there. All three of my boys wore a onesie home from the hospital, the same exact one. And I think it's hilarious because <clears throat> with my oldest, I didn't really know what size a baby was. So I packed a bunch of like zero to three clothes. He yes. was six pounds, 11 ounces. And like when we left the hospital, he was like five pounds. So he was tiny. Mm -hmm. So I had packed like one newborn, one, uh, yeah, newborn. And the rest was zero to three. And it was just like, <laughs> oh, I'll just throw this in there, whatever. The only thing he fit was that tiny newborn onesie. And it has like puppy dogs on it. It's not even cute. <laughs> and I was like, I, I had all these cute things planned, but because yep. he didn't fit it, it was like, oh, you're going to wear this blue puppy dog onesie. Well, then it became a thing. Like each baby had to wear it home. And it's like oh. it's on my shelf. I can't help it. I cherish it. <laughs> <laughs> that dumb puppy dog onesie. <laughs> um, I remember purchasing um, like a baby food uh, pouch maker mm -hmm. for my first. Never touched yep. it. Never touched <laughs> it. When I learned that you could just go to the grocery store and buy them and they last forever. The ones that you pre-make last for like an hour out of the fridge. I was like, yes, not worth it. Not worth it. Yes. Yeah. See, like, we actually did use ours, but I always say this. There's so many things that only work because one, she's our only child and two, true. we both work from home. So I'm uh, like, I can make the pouches and I can go into and the just fridge keep and them in later. there. Yes. But if I was still commuting into work, absolutely not. And I didn't use it when I was commuting. I was like, yeah, uh, yeah. too hard, too hard. Um, are yeah. there any things that you were like, could not live without for me? It's been like four years since I've had a baby. Mm -hmm. So things are like, so new now, like just yeah. when I had him, the snoo was like the newest thing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. there's a, a bassinet that puts your baby to sleep. Like <laughs> what are they going to think of next? Right. <laughs> So what, um, is there anything that you were like, couldn't live without this? Actually on that note was our bassinet. And so many people will say like, no, that is our laundry basket. You know, it is just oh. collecting dust yep. and clothes and yep. everything. Our daughter slept in that bassinet from the day she got home. We would move it into the living room. We had it oh. next to us. We moved it everywhere. And I'm so thankful for that because as a new mom, one, I was not ready for her to be in her room. And so just having her so close, but mm -hmm. also in her own space was really, really nice. Yeah. Um, 
And then with sleep too is a sound machine. This girl will sleep anywhere with a sound machine. So yeah. I have a travel one in her diaper bag. I've got yep. one in the car, anything to help her sleep. Do it. And she's a good sleeper. Maybe that helps. Maybe the fact that she was in her bassinet, but everywhere in the house was like, mm -hmm. I'm comfortable here. Um, yeah. Sound machines. I still have a sound machine in my boys' room. <laughs> They all sh three share a room. And so like, if one gets out of bed early and makes noise, I feel like the sound machine like drowns it out. And last yeah. night I forgot to turn it on. Guess who was up early this morning? Two of my, oh, yeah. like, oh, I think you woke up him and then, oh, okay. But I yeah. swear by it. I'm like, they probably are like, I don't know how to sleep without it now, mom, but it's I do too. And I worry about that. Cause I'm like, when should I take this away? Like, is it a bad thing that I use this sound machine? No. Well then you go down the rabbit hole of researching. Cause yes. <laughs> two of mine have like speech, like articulation delay. So it's not like processing or, but just their articulation is off. So one's in speech mm -hmm. therapy. One is probably going to, and I read one article once that was like, Oh, sound machines could cause speech issues. And I'm like, <gasps> Oh no. Cause I like cranked that thing up. It was like, yes. right. so I'm like, okay, maybe we'll move it across the room. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. That mom guilt now. Like I did it to him. Oh my God. Yes. The mom guilt and the research. Gosh. Um, I feel like Google is one thing every new mom should stay off of. <laughs> right. And you know, I had to get off of, so my oldest is almost 10. So this was 10 years ago when Facebook groups were like huge. And I know they still are now, but I like never go on Facebook. But sure. I remember just sitting and scrolling and looking at the questions and mm -hmm. it would just like stress me out. I'm like, baby led weaning. I need to do that. Let me look that up. I'm like, oh my gosh, just yeah. drove me crazy. So that's There's something you take much. off oh. your list. There's too much. Cause then I asked my mom, I'm like, how did you figure things out in the eighties? And she's like, we just did. Like we would ask a friend or I'd ask my mom, but we just figured it out. I'm like, you didn't have like, you know, a forum to go to, to, <laughs> to ask <Right. laughs> So different. You didn't even process a step-by-step -step guide. Right. A digital course to teach you how to do that. <laughs> She's like, no, we didn't. Exactly. <laughs> um, I remember too, I don't know if you have a baby carrier, like a wearable. I don't know. I think that for me was like lifesaver. I used it with all three of mine, every grocery trip, like they were mm -hmm. in it. If I didn't yeah. have that, I think it would have been really hard. Oh, Totally agree. Baby carrier, baby wrap, whatever kind you want to use. Yes. Yes. Which yep. by which one do you do you like? Which one do you have? Or have we had the Moby wrap, um, which I did really like, but there is another one. Oh, I can't even think of the name right now. Actually, I think it's Sully Baby Wrap. Oh, yes. And it's the same idea, one. but it's way stretchier. And that was my only complaint on Moby Wrap. It's like not even as stretchy as a t-shirt. Um, it was kind of yes. thick. It's and thicker. So I I mean, I've seen both of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Was it hard for you to figure out how to do the wrap? Every like the first like 10 times I had to watch a YouTube video. I'd be like, something's not right. Yeah. He is he is like lopsided. I was so intimidating, intimidated by this wrap. I was like, yeah, I'm never using that. Absolutely <laughs> not. And then probably a month in, I was like, oh my gosh, she Can't needs to sleep. I can't carry her anywhere or I can't carry her yeah. everywhere. And so then I was like, okay, let me just figure it out. I watched videos. I yep. watched probably two or three and I was like, oh, okay. I can do that. And yeah. then after that, I probably use that thing every day for months. Right. Right. I see a mom every day at school pickup, like wearing her carrier, walking to pick up. And I'm like, bless you. Like you're doing yeah. it. <laughs> that thing yes. is so awesome. Okay. That's so true. let's talk a little bit about entertaining a baby. Cause that was really hard for me. I didn't know, like, here you have this kid that has like a two minute attention span. They're getting into everything that they shouldn't get into. Like how yeah. you have lots of great ideas. How do you entertain a baby and a toddler with things yeah. that are not like these crazy toys that you have to buy at the store and like fill up your house? Exactly. That was a big part of it because whenever I started having to entertain her, because like I said, we both work from home. So I was like, okay, we're not going to do screens all day, even though we're right here. But I knew that she needed something more open-ended where she could explore. And it wasn't just a push of a button. And it wasn't just the next viral thing that would keep her intention mm. or attention for two minutes. You know, yeah. there's a lot of toys out there. Right. And we have a small house. We're in a starter home. It's yep. like 1,300 square feet, 1,400. Yep. That's what I was like. And I can't have this in my house. 
And I don't want to hear those noises. (laughs) Yes. I'm like, we don't have a playroom. She has her room and we have the living room. So all the toys are in those two spaces. So I had to get creative because I was like, okay, what do we have in our house that that she can explore, that she can be entertained with? And it's okay. It's non-breakable, right? Like there are factors here, but that's kind of what led me to start figuring out activities for babies and toddlers. Um, and really the biggest thing is just embracing the mess is part of it because they <laughs> will make a mess. You know, they're going to open the cabinets and they're going to open those drawers. And as long as it's not breakable, let them, because mm-hmm. those are the activities that will keep their attention where they feel like, oh my gosh, I'm getting into the kitchen stuff that mom always uses or yes. oh, I'm getting into the board games or whatever it is. Now there are some where I'm like, okay, this is too messy. We're not doing this. <laughs> But that's also where I got to, okay, we need some sort of structure too. So then I started coming up with some ideas and something simple as stacking cups or stacking some spices um, and just showing them what to do, then letting them try and they will probably start to create their own activity too. Mm. Um, And with plastic cups, those are one of her favorite things. She will stack them, but then she will also pretend to drink them and pretend oh, to pour. And so, so she cute. does a lot of pretend play. And I never showed her that, but she's wow. like, oh, let's do this. And let's I feel like pour. that's early for that. Wow. That's impressive. Well, probably because you're giving her the tools for her to try and do Yes. That. And she sees us drink with a cup. So she's <clears> like, oh, here's a cup. Let me pretend, you know, mm-hmm. it's interesting to see like what they will come up with. If you just provide something simple. Interesting. Do you have a background in early childhood development or I do. So I went to college for teaching. So my degree was in early childhood through sixth grade. Okay. Uh, And I did teach. (laughs) Yeah. And I did teach pre-K and kinder, um, which was years ago. It was way before I started a family. But then I realized that I didn't want to be in the school system as much as I love the kiddos in the education, but that's a whole different story. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. hundred <laughs> oh, percent. Very interesting. Okay. So what are some good, just you have it at home activities for kids that you can suggest. So cups easy. Yes. Well, I feel like my boys would just knock them down. Does she like to knock things over? Yes. And even then, I mean, give them a cup and a ball, let them play bowling, let mm-hmm. them knock them down or throw it. If you're okay with them throwing something, you know, um, and let them do that. I mean, that's fine. Um, another thing is tape, enjoy the tape and use it, you know, tape their toys to the wall, let them rescue them, tape something to the window, let them rescue it. And showing them that simple idea of like, Hey, I want my toy back. I have to peel this tape off, which is really good for their fine motor anyway, but it's also entertaining to them because they're like, Hey, why are these toys on the window? They don't belong there. (laughs) Yes. Oh, that's funny. Do you show her or you just kind of wait for her to find them? I will usually show her, but I will also see what she does. So I'll kind of walk her over to the window if I taped them up there and see, you know, if she starts immediately pulling them off, fine. If she's just looking at them, like, what are these toys doing here? <laughs> Mom, what do you do here? Like, here's some tape and you're going to pull it back a little bit. And sometimes I'll peel the edges too, where it's easier. Okay. Um, and then we'll just go to town and see what she does with it. Oh my God. Okay. When you said tape, I thought you meant like give her tape, which I'm like, we have probably gone through like eight rolls of tape in a month. Cause the boy's just like, I'm going to make this and I'm going to make that. And I'm going to stick it on the wind. I'm going to stick it on the floor. And you're like, why do we not have tape when it comes time to wrap presents? I'm like, where did my tape go? Oh, the boys. Yeah. The boys now I will say, I definitely prefer like the blue painter's tape mm-hmm. over Scotch that tape. tape. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I like literally found it on our floor the other day. I'm like, why is there tape on our floor? Oh, yeah. But they were having so much fun with it, right? Yes. <laughs> they get creative. That's for sure. Uh, I think I saw you doing one, um, a colander with, mm-hmm. I think you had Q-tips. So I, oh, yes. what did I do? I remember doing this with my oldest son Mm -hmm. with pipe cleaners. So I like stuck pipe cleaners in it. He, he went like this, boom, boom, boom out. And he's like, I'm done. I'm like, no, no, this was supposed to entertain you for 10 minutes. Like you're done. And he literally just left it on the floor and then walked away. I'm like, okay. So that one backfired, not interesting enough for him. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. And there are definitely activities where you're like, this is going to be great. It's going to take them forever. <laughs> and then, yeah, they just pull it out and they're like, okay, that was cool. On to the next yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. I, my uncle still gets a kick out of this. I made um, pasta spaghetti and I just mm -hmm. like gave him a bowl of it. And I'm like, this can be so fun. This can be great. I have spaghetti all over my kitchen floor. He liked that one. That one was like, cool, mom. I'm going to keep doing this all over himself. But you know how like it gets like tacky, kind of sticky. Oh yeah. It was all over the floor. It was, oh. it, that was a messy one, hard to clean up. I'm like, well, yeah. he liked it, but that was kind of a mess. Yeah. Didn't love that. Messy ones are hard for me. They, I definitely should do more of them, but anything love sensory them. or messy, I'm like, okay, you can do that uh, outside. You can go yes. to the backyard and do yes. that. That's why my son's preschool has like a rotating sensory bin where it's like rice one month and then beans mm -hmm. one month and this. I'm like, okay, like you can do that at preschool. Yes. The glitter can stay at preschool. The paint too. Oh, yes. Do that at preschool. <laughs> exactly. We Is are she, not about messy activities. Is she into painting yet? Have you done any paint with Not her? really. Um, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one is like, Ugh. yeah, I will do like a no mess paint activity with her where I'll put the paint into a Ziploc bag Okay. and let her use it kind of like a sensory bag where she can okay. just stretch it around and it moves the paint onto the paper, but she's really not a huge fan of it. And I tried to mm -hmm. do like actual painting with her, but she's still at the stage where she puts everything in her mouth. Yes. So I was like, yes. okay, maybe not, but yeah. my son watercolor, like he, I don't know what it was about the watercolor paintbrush, but it would always go in his mouth. I'm like, isn't that gross? Like, yeah, exactly. it's gross. Oh gosh. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. So no mess. What's like a no brainer. They are like, I can't think of what to do. Oh, grab this. And it's entertaining. Um, aside from tape, I would say actually something similar to the, um, colander with the Q-tips any sort of like poking or posting activity like that. It could be a cardboard box with popsicle sticks and stick the popsicle. Oh, cute. It. it could be a cup with straws and letting them just push the straws into the cup. Um, anything where they are trying to focus on one specific skill. And um, that's a lot of ours, honestly. Anything that I can poke something into that box, it could be Q-tips, it could be the popsicle sticks playing cards too. I'll just have her push oh. them through the slot. Those are quick and easy and you, you have everything already at your house. And she's like totally into it. Oh, when you did the Q-tip one, did she go back and put the Q-tips back in the colander or she just she pulled them out? She tried, but ours was kind of small. So it, mm -hmm. she didn't really have enough force to push okay. it through. She could just pull it out. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. so interesting. What about, do you have any like fun things for car rides? Have you had to do any long car rides with her? No, the furthest is about three hours. Um, and with that- Okay, that is long. Old... <laughs> That's really long. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> with a baby. Um, and we've done that maybe a few times. We have family in Houston, which is about okay. three hours. So um, the only thing that I suggest, I don't have any activities that I've brought out for her in the car yet. But we do have specific toys that stay in the car or in the diaper bag. So she okay. never sees them any time other than travel. So to her, it's like, oh, yeah. this is a brand new toy. Thank you. That's exciting. Entertain with that. And then, of course, breaks. We take a lot of breaks. <laughs> yes. Please nap. Please nap. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, Either interesting. Please nap. Or it's like that window where you're so close to bedtime. And you're like, stay awake. Please stay awake. Yes. Oh. oh God. I do not miss those days. I don't miss that. Oh, that's cause you're like <laughs> right now, she's probably like the hardest they are. They're moving, but you have to be watching them all the time. You know, like they get to a certain age, like right now at the playground, you have to be on her all the time. Cause she's just going to oh, step yeah. off the play set. When I got to the <laughs> point that I was like, my boys know that that is a big fall. I was like, I'm free. I'm free. I don't have to be up there with them. This is heaven. <laughs> yes. That sounds nice. <laughs> yes. It's coming. It is coming, but it's yes. like, oh my gosh, I'm on death watch right now. Cause everything, yes. or you've climbed onto the couch. Do you know how to get down? Let's see. Yep. Oh, like how many it's times does she bump her head? Like so many, even earlier this week, I think it was Tuesday. And my husband was like, what happened to your head? I'm like, I don't know. She just has a bump. And, and then we FaceTime grandma and grandma's like, oh my gosh, her head looks terrible. Like, 
I don't know what happened. Okay. She just bumped her head. She, she's just walking. That's what she's doing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what happens. And she's starting fits too. So she'll like throw oh. herself to the ground. Oh, no. Your head on the floor. Yeah. And then they cry even more because they hurt themselves. You're like, well, if you didn't do that in the first place, you wouldn't be hurt. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay. If you could go back to yourself when you were pregnant, what advice would you give you? Um, I think a lot of what we've been talking about, just the idea that you will never know it all. You will never have all of the answers mm. as much research as you do, as many Facebook groups as you join, <laughs> you will never know it all. And that's okay. You are not expected to know it all, but you can do your best. You will still be a fantastic mom just navigating as you go. Right. And your kids are going to turn out fine. You know, like whenever my boys misbehave, I always feel like, oh my God, what did I do? I'm like, no, they have their own personalities. They're making these choices. They're, you know, I'm there to guide them, but you know, ultimately I can't control everything they do. Yeah, exactly. And that's how they learn. I mean, their mistakes or their bumps and their bruises and their scratches, that's how they learn. So you right. just have to kind of let them, let them do that and let them learn. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. You probably get this question a lot because you have a girl over one, but so I'm going to word it differently. Can you imagine yourself having more kids? Yes. And funny enough going, because you said I have a girl over one, funny enough, we fully expected to have a boy. We were, we had really? our boy in we had did you find trip. out did you find out what you were having we did find out we just you know everyone says like oh you have that gut feeling mm -hmm. our gut feeling is a boy Whoa. Gender test, absolutely not and we were like wait what oh, and wow. because it's such a like oh you'll know and you'll you'll carry this way and you know there's mm -hmm. so many different sayings yeah you're like it's definitely a boy and so whenever we found out it was a girl there's something that I didn't know, but it's called gender disappointment or gender. Oh, yep. Thing. Yes. And I was like, I'm not uh, sad about having a baby. I'm just sad that this is not what I expected. Totally. And I don't think enough people say that that's a real thing. It you is. can feel that way. It's okay to feel that way. I literally cried when I found out my second was a boy. Cause I was like, I was so sure. I'm like, this is my girl. This is my girl. It's and I was like, have all boys. So you may mm -hmm. have experienced that too, where it was yeah. like, Oh my gosh. I'm yeah. That crazy. you just like lose that dream. Like, oh, I'm going to have this daughter that I'm gonna watch her get married one day. We're going to be best friends. And now I'm like, Oh wait, that, that was supposed to be a girl <laughs> and yes. it's a boy. Like, what do you mean? It's a boy. Like I had her, I like triple check and she was probably yes. like, girl, I see it. It's there. It's not going yeah. away. Yeah. That I is think so true. Probably up until 20 weeks, you know, they would do their scan and I'm like, are we sure? Are we sure it's a girl? Is there yes. any change? <laughs> yes. Oh, interesting. Oh. Wow. Yeah. With my third, we decided not to find out because <sighs> I, I knew, I knew it was a boy. <laughs> so I was yep. like, I'm just, I protected myself from that gender disappointment. Cause I didn't like the feeling of finding out and then carrying this baby and being like, Oh God, I'm like, I got over yeah. it, but it takes a while. Like I had to give birth yeah. to him and I had to like adjust to it. And you know, a few months mm -hmm. later, you're like, Oh, I'm so glad I like, I'm so glad I have all boys, but yes. it takes a while to adjust to that. So with my third, I'm like, I'm not going to find out so that if I go through labor and it's like finally over, I don't even care anymore. It's like, it's just a baby. I don't care what it is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. As long as they're happy and healthy, we're good. <laughs> But I knew like each of mine, I had a dream that I was having a boy before I found out. Ooh, mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah. can I like think girl thoughts and have that dream? But yes. each one, I was like, I woke up one day. I was like, honey, I had a dream that we're here having a boy. <laughs> and he's like, oh. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah, no, I never had the dream. We just <clears throat> had like that feeling. And, you know, they talk about too, like wanting the boy to protect the little girl and we oh, had all of yeah. that. And so it was like, oh my gosh. And now even my husband will say this. He's like, I hope we only have girls. I'm okay oh. with being a girl. I'm like, really? Because oh, you're so like, I want a boy and my mini me. And yes. you know how we yeah. are. Mm -hmm. And now he's like, I'm okay with girls. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> oh, see, that's how I feel about boys. Cause my husband was like, I really want boys. If I have a girl, that's fine. So we have yep. boys. Um, but for me, I was like, but I really wanted a daughter, but now I'm like, I can't even imagine yeah. what it would have been like having a girl. Like I, 
exactly. love my boys. And I'm like, I actually really like being a boy mom. So yes, it all that's works how I out. Feel. Yes. It yes. all works out the way it's supposed to, but sometimes, you know, you'll try to be in control of things. <laughs> yes, but yeah, I do think we will have more, but like I said, she's been so simple that it's hard to want to mess with that. Right. Yeah, and you're in your bit. groove. It's hard to like <laughs> shake that up again. Cause we didn't have my second until my oldest was three, a little over three. He was almost three and a half. Cause yeah. you know, we just weren't ready yet. It was like, I just yeah. were in our thing. Like we ended up moving in the middle of that. And I'm like, I'm just going to wait until we feel like we can have another one. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the age gap that we're looking at is probably three to four years. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, there's so much change happening. And so it's like, let me just figure out, especially that first year. Right. And now we're just a few months past that. And I'm like, okay, there's going to be more changes. And then the next thing is potty training. You know? yep. so <laughs> there's always something around the corner and I'm just not ready for it. Right. And it was very nice having a son that could like get himself in the car and like mm -hmm. buckle his seatbelt so that you yeah. weren't doing it with two of them. So my third was, they were two years apart. And I look back now at like a two-year-old and I'm like, how did I have a baby when yeah. my middle was that age? You're like a baby yourself. Like I just, you have to grow up. You got to be the the middle brother now. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm like you were yeah. a baby. Oh, it's a lot. <clears throat> Um, okay. She has some cousins that are summer two and summer four. So I can see oh, that gap. That's fun. And that's yes. where I was able to say, okay, I like that bigger gap where mm -hmm. they understand okay, this is a baby. We have to be more gentle or, you know, there's definitely still the rough play, but right. we understand more than a two-year-old does with the baby. Right. Right. And I don't find the age gap to like, you know, they say, I want my kids to be close. My 10 mm -hmm. year old and six year old are they're buds. Like they, I don't yeah. consider them not close. They will never be in high school together. So that was kind of like a bummer. I'm like, Oh, one will graduate when the other one starts, yeah. but it's like, but that's just how they're going to be. Like he's yeah. always the older brother. And I, I don't know. The age gap was nice for us. I liked yeah. it. And the space out college a little bit, that might be a good <laughs> thing. <laughs> yes. Hopefully space out know. that and the expenses and the big purchases mm -hmm. and all that. And like, it was nice for the older one. Like he started sports and we got to have like a couple years of just him doing sports. And now the middle one's starting. So you like space it out a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Tell us a little bit about the list that you're going to be offering. I think by the time this comes out, it's going to be live. So your yeah. activities list, tell us about that. Cause like, I am so about moms that are like <laughs> coming up with like business ideas and this is super exciting. So tell us about that. Yes. So I just finished it. Um, and it is an activity guide, 50, actually over 50 activities for specifically babies under two. So it is um, distributed into different age groups where six to 12 months have certain activities and then 12 to 18 and then 18 to 24 months. And really it's less age specific and more developmental mm. because once they're walking, they're going to want to do different activities. Once they're crawling, they're going to want to do yes, different activities. Yes. Um, and so I put together a list of all simple activities, like we said, with those plastic cups and the kitchen utensils, things that you already have at home, because I'm not about buying all of the viral yes. toys and all yes. of the kitchen or all of the children's toys. So it's all based on stuff that you have at home. And then with my degree from early childhood education, I tried to use that and what I know with development expectation. So I'm really, really excited for moms to be able to entertain their kiddos with less screen time and less toys. <laughs> yes. I love that because it's going to take the, like the guesswork out of it. Like, oh, I'm not yes. sure what to do today. Here you go. Grab some noodles, grab this. Yes, exactly. And one thing that I did that a lot of people are already saying, I love this piece is a supply index. So if you are cooking dinner and you say, okay, I've got a spatula right here and a balloon. What can I do with this? <laughs> Go to that end piece and see which activities have those. Oh, that's awesome. Supplies. So it's really taking the guesswork out. Like you yes. said, you can, you can say, I have these supplies. What can I do? And I've got it for you. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So I'm going to include a link in the show notes um, to get that. Could you also share with us how we can find you on social media? Yes, I am on Instagram. It's my name. So Megan Sanders. 
Um, and my name is spelled a little different. So it's <laughs> Megan, M-A-E. Um, so it's it's underscore Megan Sanders. And I'm sharing all about new mom life and just activities for toddlers and babies. Love it. If you're a new mom, you have to follow her. I also followed you and got the lashes tips. Um, yes. These are the, la I still, I'm like, this is my third attempt and I still am having a hard time putting them on, but I'm like, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better at putting these lashes on. So you gave like a whole tutorial about how you do your lashes. And I'm like, oh, I am doing that. I am getting them because yes. mine fell out after I had kids. Mine, like I have like bald spots in my lashes. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I am following that. So new mom stuff and also lash tips you could get from yes. her. If you follow her awesome. on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Special thanks to Megan for coming on the podcast. I absolutely enjoyed talking to her. Um, being a new mom is crazy. So it's good to know that I was not the only one that felt a little bit lost on this journey. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this podcast and I look forward to sharing another mom conversation with you next Friday. But until then, I want to remind you that everyone burns their first pancake. So just keep flipping.